Welcome to the SRS Podcast. I'm your host, Aaron J. Babiar, and I'm the Training Director of Support Raising Solutions. Whether you're a new ministry worker or a veteran looking to increase your competence and confidence, Support Raising Solutions seeks to bless you in your quest to be a spiritually healthy, vision-driven, fully funded Great Commission. My guest today is Paul Rutherford, who works with Probe Ministries. I am actually a, a big proponent believer in Probe Ministries. It's a great ministry that has blessed my family. Uh, my wife and I have been uh, in, in relationship uh, for off and on for over a couple of decades. Uh, we're, we're a big fan of their, they have something called Mind Games. It's a great ministry, but Paul and I actually connected, uh, I think it was close to two years ago now. Uh, he was sitting in on a, a, on a discussion we were having and he said something about Probe and I went, wait a minute. You work with Probe Ministries? He's like, yeah. I was like, oh, we know some of the same people. And so anyway, that's kind of how we started our friendship. But the reality is uh, Paul is in a, a role within his organization where he gets to help provide some leadership when it comes to support raising. And, and one of the interesting things about Probe Ministries is it's an apologetics ministry, which actually speaks to our topic today of what do you do when it's difficult to perhaps discuss or explain or clearly communicate the mission of your organization. And so, Paul, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll stop introducing you and just say hello to you. First of all, <laughs> welcome, my friend. I'm glad you're with me today. Thanks, Aaron. I am glad to be here with you and honored to be invited to be part of the podcast. And before we get too far in, let me just provide a counter endorsement just to say, I'll fanboy out here for a second. I love this podcast. And I listened to all the episodes. Oh, awesome. They're so great. Cool. So thank you for doing what you're doing, Aaron. It's, wow. it's such a wonderful and needed ministry. It's my pleasure. And my hope is always that people will not just benefit personally, but they'll share the episode with others. Because sometimes we have we have timely, topical discussions that, honestly, Paul, I'm not smart enough to even think of. It's, it's guests like yourself that say things that we go, oh, that was good. We should tell people about that. Mm. So, so I'm glad that you could be here today. And quite honestly, I think this topic probably pertains to a lot of people beyond you because there are many people that are working in the Great Commission, but um, it's not always easy to explain why you do what you do. And I'll even give you an example. I have a, a family that works in a very needed ministry that is helping children escape abusive situations. It's just fantastic really easy to understand ministry. But one of my family members in, in, in all love and jokiness at one, at one point said, how do you even get people to support you? <laughs> like you can't even show pictures of children. Like how do you get people to be a part of what you're doing? Oh no, what, do you, so, what are you gonna do? So I, 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 I definitely appreciate uh, the, the nuance of, of working in a Great Commission focused ministry that might not be that simple when it comes to explaining the mission. So let, let's start right there. Tell us a little bit more uh, about uh, you know when when the mission has a has you know just a little bit of a direction. The, the vision has something about it that to some people might seem a bit obscure. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a tough question. It's a tough hurdle to to overcome, but it's not insurmountable. And I think really that's kind of tracing the history of my story raising support for the okay. organization. Like you said, it is an apologetics organization. And if I can define that, uh, which just means to give a defense for the faith, okay. which is part of the Christian life, right? Mm -hmm. being, a, being able to answer the question, hey, why are you a Christian? Mm -hmm. As you're sharing your faith, as you're sharing the gospel, as you're sharing Jesus, as you're sharing your testimony, mm -hmm. it's a pretty natural question, right, that we get from time to time. Hey, that's great. I can see that your life has changed. I can see that others' lives are changed. But why are you a Christian? How does this make sense? Especially often for the intellectual person mm -hmm. or the philosopher, and especially when I run into atheists, mm -hmm. humanists, often that's where they're coming from. It's, mm -hmm. it's how can you really believe? And usually they have really difficult questions in terms of the Bible or problems of evil, this kind of stuff like that. But nevertheless, that's what apologetics is. And so that's kind of the first real obstacle that I ran into when I first started raising support for Probe, mm -hmm. which was just that you, you have spend all this time on the phone to get this appointment. You sit down with somebody at the coffee shop mm -hmm. and then they say, great. So what is probe? 
Right. What is and it? What it, is it you're doing? And it, that's why it's important <laughs> that you that you practice at things like I've been at a recent boot camp to to rehearse through and get down really clearly what exactly organization does and be able to do it without hesitation and with confidence. And that's right. why that's important. But for me, when I explain, you know, say, hey, what does Probe do? It's a Christian worldview and apologetics organization. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so you want to be able to communicate communicate that clearly in in, in, in what it is, but also why it matters, why it's important, right? Yeah, I, I, th- that's totally part of it too as well. But often when, when I, if, I, if I lead with, hey, we do apologetics, we do worldview, usually the response is crickets. Right. Usually the response is, well, what does that mean? And I, and I think that's really the difficulty I'm trying to communicate to you now, which is, uh, mm-hmm. you know, if I can give you an example by contrast, mm-hmm. right? I started out my first year interning with a campus ministry. It was fantastic, okay. right? Now, when I booked at a support appointment for this campus ministry, you know, they asked the question, what do you do? And I say, campus ministry. Right. In two words, they automatically get it. Right. Yeah. They, they have under- some idea of, oh, you're working with college students exactly. and you're sharing the Bible and exactly. Right. All that kind of you stuff. You got it. Exactly. But they- when you say apologetics, people are like, uh, huh? is that, what are you sorry for? Yeah. Apollo, <laughs> Apollo, wasn't he in one of the Rocky movies? Right. Yeah. They're, they're not necessarily connecting with what it is that you're saying. Exactly. You've, you've got it. That, and that's, that's really what I'm trying to communicate here, which is I, I love my ministry. I have no doubt the Lord has called me to it and that it is a worthwhile and wonderful ministry and the Lord does all kinds of wonderful things through Mm -hmm. us and in us and it's really great and I love it but there is difficulty when it comes to communicating that to another person who just hasn't genuinely doesn't know what that means and I can also admit you know, it's easy for me, someone who, my, my role at Probe, in addition to, to working with support raising and providing support for our staff on support raising, mm-hmm. is to be a research associate. So I'm a writer, I'm just going to confess, I'm a nerd, I love to write, I love words. <laughs> and so sometimes it's a distraction for me in appointments, support appointments, to talk about apologetics. What's apologetics if they haven't heard of it? And I can get off on a bunny trail, right? And we, sure. can, we can go there, and it's easy for me just to get distracted instead of focusing on, hey, let's talk about the ministry vision and right. how you can partner for the kingdom right. rather than getting off on, because I literally do that full time, right? right. I, so I, I re- can talk shop all day. So to restate what you just said, um, sometimes people kind of ask you a question. They're, they're essentially asking you to talk about something that you love talking about. So you're like, yeah, we'll go there. Exactly. And yet, if you're not careful, that's like almost getting on a different train track and you can go a long ways in the wrong direction that doesn't actually lead somebody to the point of them really realizing they're being invited to be a part of the work that you're doing instead of you just fully explaining every little nuance of some of the work that you're doing. So You've got it. I can see how that would be a challenge. Yeah. And when it comes to Great Commission Ministries, right, if we look at Matthew 28 in verse 19, right, where Jesus said to his disciples, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father uh, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Mm. That's in the mm. ESV, right? When we think about the great, that's the Great Commission passage. It's sure. real famous when I sit down with believers. Often they're familiar with it, right? right. And so if you just look at that in its own context, it's difficult for uh, most of the people I sit down with to understand this talks about baptizing people in the name of Jesus. Right, you guys so are tell in the me, baptism ministry. Right. <laughs> how, many people, how many people have come to Christ through your ministry, right? Right. And that's a great question, and some ministries do that. That's not really our ministry's focus. Yeah, you have a different sort of measurables. Exactly. Mm. Now, people do come to Christ through our ministry all sure. the time, and it's wonderful and fantastic. I've seen it. We praise God yeah. for it. Um, that's incredible. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Can, I, yeah. Can, can I ask you who you've seen? Oh, well, just many years ago, um, yeah. there was uh, several uh, college-age kids that were at a... Uh, mind games conference that you guys put on yes my wife and I at that time were young marrieds who happened to be working at the camp that was hosting the conference okay. and I saw some kids as they engaged with truth give their lives to Christ wow yeah so I, I've actually seen your 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 <laughs> your ministry in motion before oh. so it's easy for me to say I believe in what you're doing this is gold this is gold I did not know that thank you for sharing that yeah that's yeah. fantastic yeah so thank you for indulging me on that but yes our ministry does bring people to Christ but that's not our primary focus mm-hmm. right so when you you look at the Great Commission, when it often we, we conceive of the Great Commission as sharing Jesus, people coming to Christ. Mm-hmm. For sure, that's what it's a part of. But really, it makes more sense to describe my ministry's, my organization's mission as fitting into a discipleship category. Right. Yeah. We're about True. discipleship. We're about di- discipling the church. We're about believers. Our, our, our vision statement mm-hmm. is that believers would be free from cultural captivity mm-hmm. and be built up into confident ambassadors for Christ. Awesome. 
Awesome. Very right. cool. Sometimes we sometimes we joke that once someone is saved, uh, that they are converted to Jesus, their minds have to be converted hmm. as part <laughs> of it. Not just their heart has to be their, right. their mind. Hey, I just want to take a few seconds and mention something. Outside of the Bible, the book I most frequently recommend to great commission-focused leaders is The God Ask by Steve Shadrach. I'm humbled to say that Steve is a friend of mine who actually helped pioneer support raising solutions. And if you haven't read his book, you're missing out. Instead of going into a support raising appointment fearing what people might say, you can have confidence that God is superintending the whole process. This book will help you embrace the fact that biblical support raising is not a man ask. No, it's actually a God ask. And it's available at cmmpress.org where you can receive a 10% discount if you use the code SRS podcast. Well. Okay, so let's let, let's move on forward then. So you can struggle to communicate what your organization's mission actually is, even though you know what you're going to do and what you guys are doing, but also uh, communicating it. You have to find the right words. You have to practice and, mm-hmm. and learn how to explain and present it in a way that it's, it's really accessible yep. to people. So it's not just some pie in the sky, a lot of big words, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But people go, oh, okay. So they get a sense of what your mission actually is. So what else, though, about your organization's mission can make it a struggle to raise support for? Because, uh, you know, it really is struggling with mission. That's not something that, that just comes down to probe ministries. There's other ministries that can have a similar challenge. Oh, no, not not whatsoever. You know, and, and Aaron, I, I would imagine you're in a you're in a similar situation because likewise, your organization, your, your primary strategic mission vision values is mm-hmm. not about necessarily sharing the gospel with non-believers right. and bringing people to Christ. I believe right? in that. The, the I, measurables for your organization yeah. for a win is not how many people prayed to receive Jesus. No. Now, that's important. It's hugely and important. And you, you agree. But it's not how I spend my but time. But it's not what your organization is about. Ex- yeah. Exactly. You know, and honestly, I, I struggled with that for several years. I think the first part of my, my tenure with my organization. Mm-hmm. And, and I just, I've been encouraged uh, by what I read in 1 Corinthians Ooh. when I think about uh, chapter 3, verse starting in verse 5. What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed. As the Lord assigned to each, I planted, Apollos watered. But God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. Mm. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. Mm -hmm. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. Mm -hmm. That's also ESV. And so right there, right, we see from the Apostle Paul explaining in, in the Corinthian letter there that... There are different roles and different functions within the, within the ministry of the mm-hmm. church, with, even within the ministry of, of evangelism and of yeah. building the kingdom, right? Some people will plant the seed. Mm-hmm. You might call it evangelism. Some will water. We might call that discipleship or sanctification. I have a, an interesting parallel story in all of this. I have a, a couple that are on my support team. Mm-hmm. They have been for many years. Uh, we met... Uh, the second time around, when they were part of a church plant I did over 15 years ago, apparently... Uh, the husband and I went to junior high together in Iowa many years that right? before. Yeah, and it was like one of those things where God has just caused us to be in each other's lives off and on hmm. for three or four decades now. Interesting. Uh, but, but, you know, they told me when I invited them to be a part of the ministry that I get to do in equipping ministry leaders to survive and thrive, they told me flat out, we don't get it. And I was oh, like, no. wait, what? What do you do like, with that? I understand. And so I, I tried to explain it a second mm-hmm. way. Mm-hmm. And again, crickets, blank stare. Mm. And then, so I tried it a third way. And finally, uh, I, I believe um, the wife said, so Aaron, here's the deal. We believe in you. We believe that you have a heart for God. We believe you're a leader in ministry. We know ministry leaders want to pay attention to what you have to say most of the time. So to be quite honest, we just don't even understand what it is you're talking about. Oh, man. Um, but we want to join your team. That's, Which it's kind of rare, but I, I appreciated that, sure. you know, and they still consistently to this day, yeah. uh, they give monthly. I know they pray for me. Um, I have taken another, uh, an attempt to, to try and explain. And I finally kind of gave up and I was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to take their love and prayer. I would prefer them to understand, <laughs> but we're not there. And that's, you know, that's not like the, I'm, that doesn't disqualify them from partnering in the Great Commission no. just because they've never worked in the capacity of equipping ministry leaders to survive. That's my role. Yeah. That's my job. They're my partners in it, but it's okay that they don't get it. Though truth be told, yeah, I'd probably rather them 
get it, right? Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too, right? You know, it's, it goes back to that old saying that people give to people justified by a cause, mm. right? I learned that long ago. I, I don't know who coined it. I don't know who said that, mm -hmm. but I've heard that. And there's a lot of truth communicated there. And I'm with you. And I think that there's a lot to be said for, maybe we're on a slight tangent here, but just in terms of managing our own expectations mm. from our supporters. Yeah. I'm with you. I would love for my donors to understand everything about my organization read and all your mission. articles and read, yeah. send their teenagers to mind games <laughs> absolutely like, wouldn't that, be perfect, that would right? be great you read every word in my newsletter right <laughs> now you but, really are asleep because you're dreaming <laughs> <laughs> oh man i would love for that to happen but the reality is uh most supporters are not going to fully understand what i do yeah. and, and i think the real key there is that I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. And there's mm -hmm. just a lot to be said for my own heart and where I'm at and what I expect of my, of my supporters. Um, and in I, no way does that undermine you being faithful to the vision that God has given you. Hmm. You have a role that God has given you within, within your team for the sake of the Great Commission. And it, it's not dependent on all of your supporters' level of understanding. And to me, that's got to be, oh, I know just personally, that's very freeing. Mm -hmm. I imagine it's the same for you. Yeah, no, it is. It's very frank, and it, it's I, something I learned from other fundraisers who are not necessarily uh, missionaries or in the, in the Christian world. Mm -hmm. But they've talked about how the most important thing your donor needs to understand is that they care about your cause. Mm. That's all they need to understand. It, n not to promote being unfaithful to in or unclear in how you communicate, but right. even if they completely misunderstand your ministry, mm. but they believe in it and they believe yeah. in you and they want to give and they're okay giving, right. then that's, according to this fundraiser I was reading, that that's okay. And I'll push back on that just a little bit and say, okay. and say uh, I think perhaps a better way to say that might be they need to care about you and or they need to care about your cause, preferably both. Okay. Right? I mean, because... Yep. Because I, I'm sure there's a few people, that couple I just mentioned in particular, mm -hmm. they really don't even understand my cause. Now, they trust me. We have a great relationship. But they know that if I'm putting my mind and my heart and my hand to it, that mm -hmm. they trust me, right? It's right. For, it's for, and there's other people that I know because I've experienced it. Not that they don't care about me, but they actually care about what I'm doing. Yeah. Like they want to know what the return on investment is. They want to know how many leaders you trained this Absolutely. year, how many people in conference. And I'm going, yeah, that's good, dude. But I hope you, you know, pray for me too, <laughs> right? And so people are going to engage differently. But I, I think it's, you know, ideally it's it's a both and. That, yeah. That, that's at least my thoughts it on is. it. And of course it's not, this isn't licensed. If you're listening now and maybe you're new or maybe you're newly struggling with communicating your organization's mission, this doesn't give license to be unclear or not to be unfaithful in using the best, most clear language to communicate what your ministry really does and what, what your vision is really about. Good word. There, but there, but those are those wise, are wise exhortation and yeah. warning in there. Very, oh, very good. Very good. And very so good. I think the first, just to kind of, cap off this first section, this first question, this first obstacle is, is just that the responsibility to communicate my organization's mission is on me. Mm. And so if that, like, like I compared it to campus ministry earlier, right? Like as soon as I say that, generally they have an understanding of the context and mm. what I'm doing. It mm -hmm. communicates those really quickly. Mm -hmm. And in my current context, by saying what I do, it doesn't communicate it quickly or easily, but mm -hmm. that's okay. And so really what it means is it's another step past the Great Commission, right? Okay. Go and make disciples and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? And yeah. teach them, right? It's like, oh, okay. Well, tell me how apologetics and worldview fits into that. Okay, so then I have to connect the dots for them. I have to take them right. step by step. Hey, here's how this makes sense. Here's here's how this fits into the Great Commission. Okay. That's on me. And so that's just one extra step. And that's, you know, candidly, that's what a lot of me and some of my other coworkers spend time workshopping, you know? In, right, yeah. When we're in the office and talk and shop, hey, how do we do this best? How do we communicate this the most clearly? And Good. so Very really cool. just kind of communicating what does the or, what does your organization do when it's not either immediately apparent or it's not obvious or something they don't have any experience with or you know, they just have, yeah. they're, they're ignorant. They just they just yeah. don't know. Yeah. yeah. When they when they don't know. Yeah. So, you know, Paul, I, as we, as we move towards wrapping up the podcast soon, uh, one of the things I want to do is just kind of reclarify a couple of the things we said. And one is we realize it's not always easy for everybody to clearly communicate the mission and the vision of their ministry. And we're saying, okay, it might not be easy, but you want to make it accessible. You want people to understand yes. what the vision is. That might take extra work. You might need to talk to a few different people and go, I'm going to give you the 20 minute version. Can you help me come up with the one minute version of this? Like yeah. even to this day, uh, when, when I run into someone and goes, so what do you do? 
man, that's such a loaded thing. You know, <laughs> if I'm like, I get on airplanes a I, lot. That's that. not really impressive. I know to that some difficulty. People. Yeah, and and so typically what I say is I'm involved in a ministry that has an interactive platform that develops and connects ministry leaders to survive and thrive. That's my really short version. Wow, you know, that was very short. And, and, very and dense. That's there's a lot in there. Say. And yeah, there's a lot in there. And some people go, huh. You know, and they move on. And I've had other people, like, it stops them in their tracks, and they go, wait, what? Who do you, when you say ministry leaders, who do you work with? I'm like, mm. oh, I usually work with missionaries and church planters and youth workers. And they're like, okay, I want to hear more about that. And so it's led into meetings. But other times, yeah, like I said, people sometimes are like, oh, cool. You know, how, how's the weather? And I'm like, okay, there we go. We're good to go. <laughs> they right? were good for that. Yeah, they, they were. were and so, but being able to communicate either the short version or the slightly longer version or the really long version, that really is important for the listener mm-hmm. as someone who's raising support for the great commission ministry that God's called them to. Mm-hmm. Learning how to communicate that well really is key, but it might not be easy. They might actually have to put some real work nope. and thought process and that's into okay. nailing that out. Yeah. So. And so the other part of the difficulty uh in my organization communicating our mission, struggling with communicating clear our missions once they understand what it is, but also understanding the value yeah. of the mission, right? Because even if they under, if I spend a minute connecting the dots for them, hey, we do decide, we do apologetics and worldview, mm-hmm. then now, okay, now I understand it, great. Right. So what? What does that mean? Why should I care? Good right? point. So then there's another obstacle to overcome. And often I find Romans 12, 2 is really helpful for that, right? Mm-hmm. Which in the ESV says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Mm-hmm. That by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Okay. And often I'll point to this and I'll say, look, when you change your mind, you change somebody's life. Mm. And so even though what we do as an organization, like, what, what we would count a win, right? If we have someone who's freed from cultural captivity or built up as an ambassador for Christ, if I tell the amazing story of a changed life, mm-hmm. right? Often that story doesn't sound real dramatic. Right. It, it, yeah. As far as like drama goes, right? I sure. mean, I, I heard someone tell an amazing story about someone who's, you know, was abused as a child and they had been abusing drugs for years and then met Christ at an, an arena at a evangelism arena and Mm -hmm. and it radically altered their life and it turned them around and it set them off on a course of life and they turned around and started discipling. It was a fantastic story. It's great. It's very, and and, and it's wonderful and great. And that's dramatic. Uh My ministry never does anything like that. Yeah. You guys don't, you're not an arena rock type. No, uh, we're not. But but that, but again, that's also okay. And so it's learning to tell, it's the difficulty of telling a story. Hey, this is a story of a changed life. That's a win for our ministry. Right. But it not, isn't necessarily so dramatic. And perhaps what it is too, is what you're learning to do is, define what that fruit looks like define what the return on investment looks like exactly because you're you're kind of counting different things exactly and in that case what it is is as far as what i've learned to do is to Mm -hmm. communicate the significance of the spiritual life change yeah right and maybe part of that's just on me and what our culture values right Mm -hmm. because if someone's spirit or someone's soul Mm -hmm. uh, is changed and transformed and increasingly conformed to the image of christ which is Mm -hmm. what the spirit is continually doing in believers Mm -hmm. that's a big deal yeah that's right like like the, the scriptures teach that when someone comes to Christ, the angels are rejoicing in heaven, mm. or there's a party in heaven, yeah. right? You know, and so just learning to value things that are maybe uh, spiritual, not necessarily visible. And okay. so that's also part of the, of the difficulty I've had to overcome. And, and I'm sure you have to overcome in many ways too, because a win for your ministry isn't necessarily always a super uh, dramatic story, nope. but it doesn't mean it's any nope. less It often happens in conference rooms or in church rooms or in coffee shops that it's not... It's not super splashy. Well, well, Paul, uh, we do need to move towards closing up this podcast episode. I really appreciate you being on here. Any final words, my friend? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the chance, kind of the final thing to say before we wrap it up today. Yeah, I would just uh, encourage our listener who maybe is also struggling with the mission, man, just don't give up. Mm. Don't give up just because it's hard. Even if your mission is difficult to, mun- to communicate, it doesn't mean God hasn't called you to it. And please don't quit. I think about Galatians 6, 9. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we don't give up. Mm, good word. And I, uh, yeah, so so don't give up just because it's hard. Okay. All right. Well, Paul, it's uh, been great to have you join us on this episode of the SRS Podcast. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Aaron. It's been a blast. Thanks for joining us for this episode. We would love to hear your ideas for future content please visit supportraisingsolutions.org slash feedback to share your thoughts and questions. 
Also, wherever you download your podcast from, be sure to subscribe for future episodes and come back each week to gain more insight into the process of building and maintaining your personal support team.